Well, uh, we go to the Adamello, which is the largest uh, in, uh, intrusion in the Alps, and it's a composite and includes uh, Redi Castello to the south that intrudes uh, both uh, metamorphic and sedimentary rocks. The sedimentary rocks are Mesozoic, Triassic in particular, and are mostly carbonatic uh, with rare pilites. And the pressure temperature conditions of the placement of the Redi Castello are scarce. They're based uh, on barometer on intrusion and on thermobarometer and carbonates. And today I want to talk to you something about the contact metamorphism of uh, pilites in the southern aureole of the Redi Castello and show that they can provide uh, quite tight constraints on the pressure and temperature of emplacement uh, at the nearest uh, contact. So here's Adamello. Adamello, you see that it is uh, composite. The Redi Castello is this uh, southern part uh, that uh, I don't. intruded uh, <clears throat> at about 40 to 42 million years ago, as recorded here by the excellent compilation of uh, uranium lead zircon uh, ages by Ursa Schalteger. Uh, in the south, uh, along with uh, the common tonalite and granodiorites, uh, there are in green here and in black here, also more mafic uh, rocks, uh, gabbros and diorites. Uh, and it is, uh, this is where we are going because there is this valley where the Mesozoic rocks uh, at the contact uh, are located. So this is the Paikafaro Valley looking from north to the south, uh, this region here. In green, there are the intrusives. This part is made by uh, the more mafic gabbros and diorites. And these are the Triassic sequences that are mostly carbonatic, apart from this uh, red layer that is called uh, the uh, Lazio shale, which is uh, upper Triassic. We collected uh, uh, a fair amount of samples uh, in these uh, metapilites uh, um, located at, at various distances from the contact and some of them fortunately are just at the contact and we chose uh, six of them for further uh, investigations uh, plus two of the sedimentary rocks outside of the area. So we have samples at the contact uh, at distances up to 600 meters and outside of the area. The so-called Lozio shells look, the shell looks like this uh, outside the area. It's a black shell to siltstone and uh, it becomes a horn fest. I see Lucas smiling. Uh, with uh, huge cordurites uh, up to eight uh, centimeters uh, <clears throat> in length. They are dendritic, they look like uh, Christmas trees. <laughs> Lovely. Um, some petrography. These rocks are pretty boring, let's say, or uniform in a mineral assemblage because they contain order of abundance quartz, biotite, plagioclase, cordurite, cave feldspar, muscovite, and graphite. Cordurite appears in two textural forms, the one that I showed before, and more commonly, these small, beautiful idioblasts less than half a, milli a millimeter in size. As I said before, uh, K feldspar is present in all samples, and uh, aluminum silicate, in particular silimonite, is present only in one sample at the immediate, immediate contact. We can see that contact metamorphism was syntectonic by the oriented matrix and by the fact that uh, the matrix deflects around porphyroblasts. There's no evidence of melting here. And unfortunately, most of the samples are strongly altered. Cordurite, as we heard this morning, uh, alters very easily. But I'm going to show you fresh samples. Uh, more petrographic details. On the left, you see the oriented biotite in the matrix. And you see here that uh, the same matrix deflects uh, around uh, and within the cordurite porphyroblasts. These are the small cordurites, uh, which look like this under cross polarizers. They are beautifully sector zoned, uh, and they include uh, biotite quartz uh, and these lovely tiny 
graphites here. These are the larger Christmas tree like uh, uh, cordurites. Again, sector zone dendritic, they look like chiastolite. And in fact, as you see here uh, at the edge of an arm, there is an accumulation of graphite as often uh, happens with andalusite. <clears throat> Silimonite is important. And this is the all silimonite I found in the thesis option, but it is there. And you see here under SEM and you see it's Raman spectrum. So there is one sample with silimonite and that's it. In terms of bulk chemistry here, the analysis of the sedimentary prothelite and the, of the horn tises. I don't wanna uh, comment uh, these numbers apart from uh, the iron three plus, that is basically nothing at, uh, uh, in the metamorphosed rocks. And look at the loss on ignition. These rocks have lost almost five weight percent H2O during contact metamorphism. This is a, a nice number. Uh, the bulk composition corresponds to a low alumina metapilite. And these rocks would generally contain aluminum silicate and not k per at these conditions. How does it uh, uh, work? If we plot the bulk composition on this uh, cache diagram, you see that the, both of the calculated and the XRF compositions plot to the left of the Muscovite quartz tie line. But uh, the effective bulk composition, after we remove the alumina due to the combined presence of a lot of cordurite, biotite, and plagioclase, plots at the red point and explains why there is a KFS part rather than aluminum silicate. Mineral chemistry, these are <clears throat> the values of a magnesium number of biotite and cordurite, titanium and biotite, the sodium content of the white mica and of the alkali fesper and the anorthite content of the plagioclase. These compositions are fairly homogeneous and there are slight differences uh, as a function of the distance. As I said, there is a sodium component that we are uh, taking into account later in the modeling. Um, and the two different uh, uh, textural generations of cordurite have the same composition. If we try to use the titanium in biotite uh, thermometer, the strange thing is that both the samples at the contact and far from the contact give more or less the same temperature range. Mm -hmm. uh, we tried the thermometry with another approach, with uh, uh, the Raman spectrometry of the carbonaceous matter. These rocks have up to uh, 0.5 weight percent carbon, so there's a lot of tiny graphite, all the black stuff that you see here and here is graphite. You know that uh, <clears throat> the thermometer, um, the thermometer uh, explores uh, the uh, difference, uh, high, different heights of the two uh, ordered and disordered peaks of the carbonaceous matter, and uh, its application is on the right. The two upper panels. Uh, are the results from the rocks closer to the contact and the temperatures that you can hardly read. This is 600 and this is 700. Uh, the temperatures are recorded, keeping in mind that this therm thermometer cannot go up to temperatures higher than 640. Uh, if we uh, consider the distribution, we can conclude that the temperature that this thermometer gives is around 610, 620 degrees. If we go further away from the contact, we get lower temperatures of about 50 degrees less. We tried thermodynamic modeling in this, and also including manganese, including iron three plus system. Uh, taking into account the presence of graphite and using a, a fluid with an XO of one third. And uh, regardless of what we used and what we did, uh, we were never able to reproduce neither the assemblage developed in all uh, the, the horn faces nor the assemblage with the silimonite. 
uh, because uh, <clears throat> unlike what we see in the rocks, K feldspar only occurs after the Muscovite quartz breakdown. There is Andalus Andalusite uh, uh, present uh, here, and uh, <clears throat> Cordierite is uh, present only at uh, pressures below 2.8 kilobars. Um, these are problems that also Dave Pattison, I don't know if he's online, uh, found uh, some years ago. And uh, it seems that uh, there, are, there might be some problems with the thermodynamic model of cordurate. So instead of uh, working on the properties as uh, Dave did, we just uh, throw away, threw away the pseudo sections and went to the went to the old-fashioned Bathograd approach. Um, so we modeled the second silimanite equilibrium, taking into account the presence of sodium and taking into account the presence of graphite. And this is what uh, uh, the modeling gives you. And the constraints that we get from the field and from the thin sections is that uh, we have an isobaric path, as in all aureoles. We have never seen Andalusite. We have always K Felspar and Silimanite occurs only once by the Muscovite plus quartz breakdown. And Muscovite is still there. So it's not, we didn't run out of Muscovite. In order to account for all these uh, uh, constraints, it is necessary that the isobaric path uh, followed by the sample closest to the contact passed above this red point of which is the Andalusite Silimanite solid solution of muscovite case pair, quartz and fluid, and it, which is here. So the pressure must have been greater than 3.3 kilobar, and the temperature must have been greater than 620 degrees. These are the constraints that uh, uh, were, give, were provided by our sample. In terms of that or intrusion, this pressure uh, translates into uh, more than 12 kilometers for the emplacement of the Radi Castello at about 40 million years ago. This estimates, with the ex exception of what wrote uh, uh, John and Blunt in 93, based mostly on barometry uh, provided by the intrusives, uh, these estimates are greater than what is generally assumed. Uh, you might say, well, with that tiny silimanite disequilibrium, whatever. Um, well, I can tell you that we are working on this area located more than 20 kilometers to the northeast, and we get the same phase relationships for what, for what concern, concerns the, the second silimanite assemblage. So we believe these estimates are quite strong. And... Uh, uh, combined with these results, they suggested that, that uh, there wasn't tilting in the region after 42 million years. And uh, combined with our data, they can constrain the exhumation rates uh, during the 12 million years of uh, history of buildup of the Adamello, but also later than that. And uh, the conclusions are that this is a simple study, uh, straightforward to me, even though there are some anomalies, there is this anomalous behavior of uh, uh, the presence of k spar, and there are the problems of a thermodynamic model. But you have seen that we were able to constrain pressure and temperature relatively well or pretty well by the good old Bathograd approach. And the pressure is greater than what uh, is expected for Adam Allen. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, one quick question. Yeah. Are those pressed to treat pseudomorphs after Andalusite? Well, uh, <laughs> I would say no. These are nice cordurite, still fresh. And uh, as I said, there is no evidence at all of uh, Andalusite. Uh, I mean, I've never heard about cordurite pseudomorphing Andalusite. <laughs> so <laughs> I would say no. 